Man, I'm genuinely worried about my town. So, this all started months ago. Before we get too deep in this video, I want to make it a point that I know there are some kind of people out there that praise cops because they're just cops. And I know that there's some people that say F the police because they just don't like cops. And me being a truthful person, I've been on both fences. But now that I'm 30 years old and I've had, you know, a, a good bit of life experience, I've come to find out that it isn't the police uniform that makes people bad. It's the person who puts it on in the morning. They were the way they were before they put that uniform on. And they are that person when they take it off. My next thing. No one should get special treatment because of the number in their bank account or for what kind of car they drive. And you should not get treated differently and worse because the number in your bank account or what kind of car you drive. Whether it's a brand new Ferrari or a beat up Buick. If I'm riding around smoking a joint in a Lamborghini, wearing a $600 shirt, I should get in trouble the same as the person wearing the Walmart shirt and pajamas, riding around in a beat-up Ford Tempo, smoking a joint, just the same. And the reason I turned out the person that thinks that way is because my parents raised me the right way. It's because the community that molded me. The very community that I'm about to talk about. Will this video probably get me pulled over more? Probably. Will it will it make certain people fuck with me a little bit more? Probably. But to me it don't matter because I feel that this needs to be said. Lately I've been noticing certain members of my community treating me different. And it's people that I don't have any association with. It's people that I really don't know. But it's people that are in like really important positions of power which is the sketchy thing. Now, keep in mind, I grew up here, and I've been here my whole life. I know all the Sonic girls by name. I know the people that work at co-op. I know the Walmart greeters by name. I know everyone that works at every restaurant. I know half the police. I can tell you everybody who's probably going to show up from 7 o'clock to 9 o'clock at Lakeview Market for purity chocolate milk and a pack of biscuits. And in the summertime, I can tell you the name of the guy who randomly sits at the boat dock at Riverview and catches the biggest fish somehow. I don't know how he does it. What I'm trying to say is, is I'm very invested in this town, no matter who the person is. Which is why I got my town tattooed on me. Is because, you know, I genuinely care about this place. But anyway, back to what I'm trying to tell you. So, a couple months ago, you probably already seen it. I got pulled over. Well, technically, I guess, not pulled over, but pulled over. I was at Sonic getting some food, and this cop come up behind me. This was my first actual, like, um, interaction with this guy. Now, granted, I didn't have a tag on the car, all this other stuff. I should have got a ticket. I got a ticket. Now, from me getting this ticket to when I was supposed to go to court, we'll get to that in a minute. A lot of my friends started getting pulled over by this guy to the point where we would go to the gym. And I remember one time I'm already at the gym. I told them, hey, you want to meet there? And they were like, yeah. So they ended up being on their way there. They got pulled over in the parking lot. This same cop was like, I smell weed. And they're like, OK, we'll search the vehicle. They tore apart his whole vehicle and didn't find anything. There was another incident with this cop where he pulled up in one of my buddy's driveways and was like, were you just driving that truck? And he was like, no. And he's like, yes, you were. He's like, no. What do you, like, what do you want? Then there was another incident with another one of my buddies. I'm not going to say any of their names. Where my buddy had pulled into his sister's driveway. Went to a party down the street. Already been there for a couple hours. His sister calls him. Hey, the cops are here. He's like, okay, why? They're like, they want you to come down here. He comes back down there. And not on the road, because he'd already been at a party. He had somebody drive him down there in a Can-Am. He gets down there, and the cops are like, is this your truck? And he's like, yeah. And they're like, no, it ain't. It's Ryan Up Churches. And he's like, what do you want? And they're like, license and registration. He's like, 
bro, the truck's been parked for like hours. You can't just pull up in somebody's driveway and be like, hey, license registration. So at this point, I was like, there's some very odd behavior going on. So I had one of my buddies over here, and I said, man, I'm going to call Ashland City Municipal Court, and I'm going to ask them when my court date is with this cop. Me knowing when the court date is. I just wanted to see if, I was like, surely they're not going to like do anything weird. So I called down there and I'm like, yes, ma'am. Um, my name's Ryan Upchurch. I'm just trying to see when my court date is with said police officer. There was a, about a five second pause, a, a little giggle. And then she was like, just uh, don't worry about it. And I was like, what does that mean? And she's like, well, just, you don't have to come no more. It's it's taken care of. So I hang up the phone, and I, I look at my buddy who was sitting right there. And he was like, dude, that's weird. And I was like, right? So fast forward to the supposed date of the court date that I was supposed to have, but I wasn't supposed to worry about. That day passes. A couple of days later, I went down to the same place because you can get like tags and titles and stuff down there as well. So I walk in because I have to take care of some uh, out of date tags. And when I get in there, I walk in and the cop at the front door is like, why didn't you show up for court the other day? I thought he was joking. I was like, I didn't have court the other day. He said, yeah, you did. I said, says who? He was like, says the court system. I was like, so about that time, the lady that like runs all that shit that has to do with like court stuff down there, she walks out of her office or whatever as I'm going in to, like, get my tag, and the cop is like, hey, Miss So-and-so, uh, he, Miss Rupchurch had court the other day, huh? And she was like, yep, and she's, like, locking her door. And I was like, uh, no, ma'am, I was like, I actually called down here, and I asked if I had court, and somebody told me that I just didn't have it for some reason. And she's like, that didn't happen. I was like, where's his attitude coming from, for one? So at that time, I was like, well, I guess I'm going to have a lawsuit against this county, I reckon. And she's like, well, I can't talk to you. <laughs> so and then she leaves. I was like, fuck, dude. Well, after she walks off, the cop that was at the front was like, why was she being so nasty to you? And I was like, I don't know, man. I have no idea. I don't even know that lady. So at that point, I was like, dude, what do I do? Because this has to be against the law. You can't just, like, erase a court date. So I call the police, and I'm like, yo, I need one of y'all to come down here and, like, explain to me what I need to do, because there's some really weird stuff going on up here. So as I'm walking out of the place where you, like, get tags and, you know, deal with court stuff, you know, I get about 30 feet outside the door, walking with Deardorff, and because Deardorff was outside, he pulled up in case I was going to get arrested, because I didn't know if I was going to get arrested or not for missing court. Now, granted, I don't know what the cop at the door was talking about, but... By the time we were walking out the door and we were where we are, there's two double doors and both the double doors were open. And as we're walking and talking, we hear the cop very faintly. He goes, uh, it's an army green Lamborghini. And me and Robert looked at each other like, what the fuck? Two Ashland City cops pull up. I tell them what's going on. And I was like, listen, man, I was like, here's what's going on. I don't, I don't know what to do. Like this, it doesn't sound like it's very legitimate. It sounds sketchy. I mean, I, you can't just, like, tell people they don't have court dates, and then they do. So they purposely get in trouble. So the cop to the right stays out there with me. The cop to the left goes back in, talks to the cop at the front, and then walks somewhere where I can't see him. He comes back outside. A number calls, because I didn't want no one having my number. A number calls my security guard, Rob's phone. He answers it. He hands the phone to me. Some lady starts talking to me. I don't know who the lady is because I can't see her face. Essentially, she starts asking me, so what's the deal? What, what, what do you need? This, that, and the other. Well, I start talking to her because I have no idea that it's the lady that was just rude to me. So now this lady has already left work. She's calling me from a personal phone, not from her office phone, and asking me these questions. I'm answering them. Well, then I mention, yeah, there was a lady that was being super rude to me. And she's like, that lady was me. I was like, okay, well, why were you being like that? She's like, I wasn't. I was like, I didn't know what to say at that point. I was like, well, you know, can I get another court date or whatever? She tells me my court date. We hang up with each other. Well, check this out. What I just noticed the other day, like three days ago, was that they put the court date, the new court date, 
the same time I'm supposed to be at Corbin to do these shows. So I told my mom, I was like, bro, I don't care if I get arrested. I'm going to do this Corbin show. I'll come back and get arrested. You know what I mean? <laughs> That's just me being real. It is what it is. So fast forward to today. We called down there to change the court date. Do you know what they told us today? Uh, we don't have any court date on file for him. No, you're not doing this to me again. Not happening. So, we were like, well, where do we, where do we, where do we call? Give us the number. They give us the number. We call the other number. They tell us, uh, we don't know. Call this number. The number that we just called that told us they didn't know. Giving the runaround so I purposely get in trouble. <laughs> Assuming, I guess I would be like, oh, what? I guess I don't have it this time. No. No. Regardless of you trying to get rid of it and be like, oh, no, it's fine. No, you're not doing that. I, I want to be treated the same. So today, we're me and the whole gang are running around getting everything ready for Corbin, getting the Lambo loaded up to be hauled down there and all this other stuff. My mom physically has to go down there because she's my power of attorney. She physically has to go down there and she walks in. My mom's the nicest person in the world, bro. She would not hurt the devil. My mom walks in, talks to one of the other ladies. The lady's super nice to my mom. My mom tells her what the deal is. The other lady, the lady, was talking to somebody else, being nice as hell. As soon as the lady went back there and told her what my mom was there for, a switch flipped. And she just wanted to be an asshole, I guess. Okay, she's going to, um, I think she's going to talk to Miss, um, Anita, and then they'll be up. Okay, awesome. Thank you. You're welcome. I don't think you're waiting to sing that. Oh, okay. Yeah. You are? Patricia Burgess. Okay. Ryan's mother. Okay. Okay. You want to talk to me? About oh, yeah, I just need to know if we can move a court date or pay a ticket. He has an insurance violation, so he has to come to court for that. Okay, so... And I told him last month when I rescheduled it that he would have to be here this week. He'll need proof of insurance when he comes. Okay. He had it when he was stopped. He'll need it for that time. Okay, perfect. All right, All right thank you so much. Mm -hmm. But I will be able to continue it again now. <laughs> you can just hear it in her voice. The awkward silences where there shouldn't be any, you know, the, the non-helpfulness. My mom's trying to tell her, Thank you. And she's like, nah, I ain't going to be able to do this again. We wouldn't be having to do this if you would do your job the correct way. We wouldn't be even in this situation if your office wasn't telling me that I don't have a court date. Well, actually, it's too professional to say it like that. If they weren't like, nah, don't worry about it. Whatever that means. Now, you can talk like, now, next time, hey, there ain't going to be no next time. You can talk like that all you want. The situation is your fault. When a citizen of the community is calling your office asking, hey, just want to check up on my court date because as a functioning member of society, I want to show up and not fuck anything up. When your office goes, <laughs> don't worry about it. It's taken care of. And then that's false. And then when I don't show up because your official office told me I don't have to, that sounds like a form of entrapment. And my whole thing is, this isn't about me. This is about the other people in our community. I can deal with y'all's bullshit. I have millions of dollars to deal with y'all's bullshit. But here's what bamboozles me. If you were going to do something like this to someone like me, who documents everything, who's never been in trouble, who's never had failure to appear on their record, who's never been arrested who's never been booked in Cheatham County for anything whatsoever, who's never been in trouble for drugs, to someone who takes pride in this county to the point where they get it tattooed on their skin, to someone who cares about being a member of this society, hello, being a member of this society, to show kids, hey man, you can be whatever you want. I, I was a dirty little ratchet motherfucker around here too. But guess what? You can still be anything you want. I mean, dude, I enjoy being a role model for this town. And if it doesn't show, then you fucking don't have any eyeballs. But that's the thing. That's my whole point, man. What If you're going to do this to somebody who can put up with it, how many people have y'all done this to that y'all put in financial trouble, dude? Like, come on. Me in my situation, I'm going to laugh at you. And I'm going to have conversations around town with other people about how pathetic y'all are. But if you pull this on someone who is 
a single mom working her ass off to make ends meet, barely paying light bills, taking care of their kids. You pull some shit on somebody like that, it's very dire. It causes them a lot of stress. They could lose their job. That can make them unable to pay their rent, get kicked out, be arrested where they can't be with their kid, crying in a jail cell because you people are like, nope, they got caught today, when really they do. I mean, good God, don't you think this town's been through enough shit in the past year or two? <laughs> There's like a handful of good ones around here, the sheriff being one of them. The sheriff is a great person. But dude's got so much shit on his plate, it's ridiculous. And the fact that you have so many important roles in this county, just like walking around like a bunch of drunk babies, like, I can do my job good. You can't even tell me that I have a court day. What do you mean you can do your job good? If you live here and work here, try to make the place look good. I mean, motherfuck, dude, the, the rapper with all the tattoos in town is constantly trying to make the town look good. We got jailers being fired for torturing people in the jail. Tracy, this video is hard to forget. It shows an inmate at the Cheatham County Jail strapped to a chair, repeatedly tased by deputies. A lawsuit filed on behalf of the inmate says he suffered more than 40 taser burns. We got cops being fired for sexual assault. Now this News 2 crime tracker alert, a former Cheatham County sergeant has been arrested on charges of sexual battery. The sheriff says Jeremy Etheridge turned himself in to law enforcement today. He was fired, by the way, in September for, quote, violating department policies and general orders regarding personal conduct while off duty, end quote. The TBI says Etheridge is accused of inappropriately touching a female without her consent, but agents didn't elaborate any further. We got cops being fired for sexting minors. Investigators say a former Ashland City police officer had an inappropriate relationship with an underage female. Benjamin Moore was arrested and booked into the Cheatham County Jail. According to the Tennessee Bureau of Investigation, he is charged with solicitation of a minor and exploitation of a minor by electronic means. He is also facing one count of tampering with evidence. Hell, we even have cops being fired for showing up to the wrong house during a 911 call and shooting through the motherfucker's trailer when it could have kids in it. Not to mention, you almost shot your fellow officer in the fucking head. Fox and another deputy were sent on a 911 hang-up in Chapmansboro. They went to the home of Mark Campbell, did not identify themselves, right, up, and then man? after an exchange with Campbell inside, Fox pulled his weapon. Do what, Mark? You good? I went to open the door and I got the door open about four or five inches and then boom, boom, two shots come through the door. Yeah, it's the closest thing to the wild, wild fucking west around here. And I document this kind of stuff because it's getting pretty fucking sketchy. You know how a couple of weeks ago I told y'all, I was like, man, I think this cop is watching my Instagram or something. Well, guess what? Me saying this might get me in trouble with a lawsuit or something, but I don't care. You know he's got a lawsuit going on with somebody else in town right now. Do you want to know why he has a lawsuit going on around in town with this person? Because this dude thumbed through my Instagram through like a thousand comments to find someone talking about him. Yes, that, yes. I, I'm being for real. So yeah, it is possible that he <coughs> is looking at my Instagram, which is why he's everywhere at nighttime when I try to go run at the gym, when I try to go get water from the gas station. All the good cops in this town have nothing good to say about this dude. And I'm not telling you who those cops are because I want to protect the good cops. The same cop I'm talking about followed my mom the other day to Walgreens. She was going to Walgreens to pick up, where's it at? To pick up my prescription for prednisone for this Corbin show because I need it. Follows her to Walgreens, gets out, and walks into Walgreens. And if you don't know what prednisone is, prednisone is a tiny white pill. It's a steroid. And it's for like, um, it's for, it's like to open your airways and stuff. Like if you have breathing problems. And I asked her, I was like, well, what was he doing? She's like, I don't know. He kind of just walked in and just stood there and bought a pack of gum. <sighs> and the thing is, I, I truly don't know what the fuck's going on. I don't know what the deal is with all this weird ass behavior. A cop told me yesterday, I'm not going to say who this cop was. But he's like, dude, what's the deal with all this shit going on with you right now? I said, bro, I don't know. I said, what do you think? He said, bro, I think they think that you're doing, like, something illegal. Well, here's my reply to that. Well, good. If you think that, get me investigated.
It wouldn't be something hard to find out. If they can solve forensic murders from fucking six years ago, I'm pretty sure they could tell if I was pushing drugs out of a fucking driveway that's six feet long. You do know that I make music for a living. Like, a lot of music. And a lot of people listen to it. But you want to know what I think it is? Here's what I think it is. I think that all the rich, crooked motherfuckers around here stick together, which is fine. But you know what? I don't think they like a rich motherfucker like myself being on the side of the community. Every good cop, every drug addict that's wanting to get off drugs, trying to get off drugs, every kid with a broken home, every kid who has a dream but don't believe in himself, that's who I stand for. And that's why I'm going down in history in this town. If I don't go down in history anywhere else, I'm going down in history here. And there ain't nothing you can do about it. So if I'm bullshitting and standing beside a cop at the gas station, or if I'm eating breakfast with a judge in the morning, or if I'm standing beside somebody who's running for sheriff around here, you know why that is? It's because they're on the fucking good side of shit. And if you question who I am, walk into the corner store, go to Sonic, go to the Kangaroo, go to the Shell, Go to the co-op, go to the tractor supply, go anywhere. Ask any regular, everyday person around here. They'll tell you exactly who I am. You know why? Because I'm for the community. And last but not least, if the shoe fits you in this video and you live around here and you're thinking about bothering me or harassing me or taking me to court, please do it. My lawyers are better than yours and I got way more fucking money than you.